Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Holmer here. How's everybody getting along coming off the weekend here? Let's take a look. What is going on here in the tropics? Well, we got some unsettled weather across the east with that trough. We'll see if that continues. But take a look at this. We got an area out here into the Atlantic that has a 20% chance through day five. But what is going on here along the U.S. East Coast? We'll definitely keep an eye on this as we go throughout time. But the most interesting feature that you were probably tuning in here was what is going on that third week of September. What is going on with this feature right over here? Is this going to be some sort of tropical system in the Gulf? We'll take a look at all the details and the rest of your entire tropics from Atlantic to Pacific in this edition of Weather Eastern. All right, so let's take a look here, starting off with the GFS. Let's see if we got any areas of concern. Well, there's what's left to Earl up here, uh, Danielle up there. Take a look at this. So this area out in the main development region of the Atlantic, up to 20% chance through day five. Look at that wave out here in Central Africa. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on that as we go in time. But take a look at this. As we go in time, let's see if we have any areas this week or if it's all going to be that third week of September. So here we go. We got some areas of concern out here in the main development region. But take a look at this area right around Florida. This is Wednesday. So it's coming out of the eastern gulf. See how it just forms? Now look at off the southeast coast. This is by Thursday, September 15th. Yep. Look at this. This looks like a little bit of a concern to me. Uh, we will have an area of strong high pressure up here on the northeast. So this will increase the pressure gradient and the onshore flow. So there will definitely be some wind and some beach erosion here. Is this going to be more like a nor'easter or some tropical system or potentially tropical but we'll watch it this week see if anything gets cranking here off the southeast coast you see this is by friday uh, september 16th let's see how far north it gets is that high retreats definitely parts of the middle atlantic here delmarva peninsula up to the northeast definitely want to keep an eye on this for the most part, the GFS slides this just offshore, so New England doesn't seem to really have to worry too much about it other than some be a beach erosion. Uh, now, we're getting into the third week here. This is Sunday, September 18th. I have some interesting waves coming off the coast here. Definitely an area out here into the just east of Bermuda, potential development. And here it is, a wave is approaching uh, the Caribbean islands here. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. But look at this is where things get a little bit interesting across the Gulf. Heading on into the third week of September here. So let's put this into motion. See what we have going on here. So this seems to be a stalled out frontal boundary. And you have to watch these areas this time of year. Here's a more vigorous wave approaching the Lesser Antilles. This is by Tuesday, September 20th. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. And watch as we go throughout time across the Gulf. Watch the Gulf of Mexico here. There's the Caribbean. There's, there's a potential circulation as well uh, developing by Wednesday, September 21st. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. And take a look at this. As we continue in time, let's see what cranks out of this. Now look at this. Uh, Thursday, September 22nd. Look what starts to really happen here. This is their tail end of the front. Here is another wave out here in the Caribbean Islands. So definitely going to keep an eye on that. Another wave out here in the main development region of the Atlantic. But look at this across the eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico. As we head towards Friday, September 23rd. Look at this. Yeah. Definitely going to keep an eye on this. We'll see momentarily if the Euro is still picking up on this. We'll watch this because this definitely has some sort of possibility of developing. So if you're in New Orleans over towards Tallahassee, Tampa, Florida, definitely keep an eye on this. We have a couple tropical waves continuing through the Caribbean islands here. Look at this. Intertropical convergence zone really heating out here into parts of the eastern uh, Atlantic here. So as we continue in time, look at this, how it just moves inland here across New Orleans and a continuous tropical flow continues. So keeping it very unsettled here across the North Central Gulf through Sunday, September 25th. And look at this massive wave here uh, heading through Hispaniola and parts of Jamaica. And look at that as we continue in time. Let's head towards the last few frames here. Yeah, we could be looking at some sort of name system if this verifies uh, across the Caribbean. So definitely want to keep an eye on this.
All right, so let's see if the Euro picks up on any of these systems that the GFS does. Now, look what the Euro's doing out here. Definitely ramping this system up a bit more than the GFS did. There's that area of high pressure. Look at these two areas of highs. These are going to kind of combine forces, and I'll show you as we continue to head throughout time here. Take a look at this. So, yeah, the Euro is indicating that these high-pressure systems will kind of combine forces with the North American high. And this could help keep, look at these waves. They're just going to keep moving west here. And this could definitely affect, you know, the Gulf of Mexico here as we head throughout time. Now, as we continue towards Thursday, September 15th, high pressure is continuing to build westward here. There's an area of uh, possible uh, tropical wave here. And look at this, getting a little stormy here into the... Uh, Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, and let's watch this and see if this plays out any similar to the way the GFS did. Well, there's a potential area, and here's one coming off the coast of Africa, and here's another area, and then there's that area in the Gulf. This is by Saturday, September 17th. Let's see if we have any sort of flare-ups here, and there it is. As we continue to get, let's back that up just a few frames, so yeah. The Euro's hinting, you know, we'll have a storm out here. It'll find a weakness between these two high-pressure systems as this high builds and combine forces here with the East Coast high. And watch this. As we head throughout time, there's a system along the U.S. East Coast that seems to go tropical as well. And there's that tropical wave here that the GFS was hinting on here in the Caribbean. I can't get the Euro to go out any farther at this point, but definitely going to keep an eye on this. Uh, Euro is indicating a little bit more of a slower pace with this system. But if this were to develop, there's that area of high pressure. Um, definitely would keep on towards the west nor or the northwest here. All right, so let's take a look at the Eastern Pacific momentarily here. Here's Wednesday into Thursday. Yeah, we have that system here south of the resort towns of Mexico. So this is likely to develop into some sort of hurricane. As we go in time, look at this. Just south of Puerto Vallarta, look at that system. That looks pretty formidable. Definitely going to be close enough to the coast that we might have some of these outer bands really affecting. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for this. This is 40% chance of development through day five. And as we continue to head on through, kind of heads out just south of Cabo San Lucas, Baja here, and then heads out into the cooler waters. And look at that, another storm kind of forming behind it. So yeah, more systems heading up along the coast here that could affect uh, your vacation here along the Mexican coast. So definitely want to keep an eye on it here. All right, Western Pacific. We have Typhoon here, Muafa. This system is rather interesting because it is going to affect some very populated areas of China. Look at this. It is a major typhoon at this point. Um, so let's put this into motion and see what the GFS does with it. So... Yeah, as we kick it up along Tuesday, September 13th, this is a pretty formidable typhoon. It continues to show signs that it's going to, you know, keep at least Category 2. Um, but here we go. This is Shanghai, China here. So this is a very populated area. Look at the path this system's going to take. So as we continue in time here, heads right up along the coast. GFS is a little bit farther east of the official track. But take a look at this, yeah. The central core of the system, especially the western side, could really be working into uh, parts of downtown Shanghai here. So as we continue, this is actually on Wednesday, uh, September 14th here. So this Wednesday, and as we continue in time, look how it just moves right up along the coast and then towards northeast China. Here's South Korea over here, Japan's over here, and look at it, it just moves right up along the coastline here so this could be pretty damaging this could especially be you know coastal flooding inland flooding winds and look how it just gets caught up in the westerlies then another typhoon look at this targeting southern japan by next saturday september 17th so definitely want to keep an eye on this look at it it actually brings it in and makes it landfall and goes up along the entire uh japanese area here so look at that and then it kind of gets uh, entrained here into the westerlies and then look at that this is going to be a busy time because look at another typhoon yeah heading right into the exact same area this is by friday september 23rd 
this could be really devastating to have two typhoons within a week period heading into southern Japan. All right, so let's see what effect this pattern could have here on the tropics as well as your weather overall here. Take a look at this. We got massive blocking up here in Greenland. But look at this trough kicking across the Great Lakes. Ridging really starting to build here across the east despite some unsettled weather to start off the week. And that upper level low kind of pivots towards the northeast and the east coast for your Tuesday. So we're dealing with this retreating high, which... It's kind of retreating away from the U.S. East Coast, but it's actually building towards the southwest. This will start to push some of these tropical systems, tropical waves, towards the Gulf instead in time. And watch as we head throughout the week. That ridging really starts to combine forces here with this Bermuda High. Look at how we really push this Bermuda High into the Gulf and the Caribbean. And look at this big old ridge. Yep, this is heading towards the East Coast, so... Um, yeah, we're dealing with this big old low pressure here across northeast North America. Blocking continuing up here in Greenland. So watch this as we head in time. That ridge really takes over across the east. So that'll be high pressure across most of the Atlantic into eastern North America. Any tropical system will be pushed much further to the west here uh, instead of recurving out into the Atlantic. And look at that. We get a massive trough developing for Wednesday, September 21st out here. This pushes a massive ridge here across the east. All right, so let's take a look at the mesoscale features here. Um, we're going to start off here taking a look at later Sunday here. So yeah, Florida all the way up into parts of the northeast. There is a lot of tropical moisture to be had. It's being funneled up on the east side of this upper level low near Chicago. So you can see all of this moisture heading north. It isn't too terribly heavy, though. So it's not going to result, you know, in tremendous amounts of rainfall, but, you know, enough to wet the ground and the plants. As we head through early Monday morning, you can see a lot of this starts to finally make it into parts of New England here. And we have some stray showers and thunderstorms. Here's the upper level low back here through Chicago. As you continue on the, along the southeast coast, this is where we start to see, you know, more tropical moisture really start to take hold here. So let's continue in time. Let's see what the pattern holds here as we head through the rest of your Monday. Look at this. Yeah, we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms really start to develop here across western New York, western Pennsylvania. This is by 2 p.m. So just after your lunch hour in the northeast, none of these are expected to really be severe. But look at they could contain some some gusty winds and definitely heavy rain. That's going to be the big story here. Look at this. Binghamton, Rochester. These areas, most areas will see a tenth of an inch on average, but some of these stronger storms could contain up to a half to three quarters of an inch per storm. So, yeah, looking at some really big gully washers here. And watch this as we go throughout the rest of your Monday. 6 p.m., 7 p.m. So that evening rush. Yeah, look at this. Some of these could be really heavy here. So, yeah. Definitely getting into Wilkes-Barre, Scranton there by 10 p.m. Look at that. Into the Catskills, the Poconos, southern Hudson Valley region, just west of New York City. Look at this. This is by midnight, heading on into early Tuesday morning. Look at this. So we continue to progress this to the east, and look at that, into New England. It does weaken a bit, so by 6 a.m. here Tuesday morning, You'll still be getting some measurable rain here, which is good news for the drought situation. All right, and if we take a look here, continuing on 10 a.m., 11 a.m., yeah, we're going to start to really get some formidable rains up here into parts of New England. So Tuesday's your day. Look at this. Some heavy gully washers. This is 3 p.m., just before the evening rush Boston over to Albany, New York. Uh, these areas could be seeing some pretty big gully washers here. So yeah, those areas that get some of this heavier rain, this is by 7 p.m., so after the evening rush, and heading on it up into Maine here. All right, so the AHRRR model, let's take a look and see what the rainfall totals from later Sunday into Monday look like here. So as we head into early Tuesday, there it is. So we'll take through late Monday here. Take a look at this. So most of New England stays dry through Monday here. But look at this. Yeah, some of these gully washers... Here in western New York, western Pennsylvania, especially uh, west of Interstate 80, 
one here. Could definitely see some of these areas getting up towards an inch, inch and a half. Most areas will see a tenth to a quarter inch on average, but she's definitely going to keep an eye on here because some of these could, you know, bust the drought a little bit. And look at that out on Long Island through extreme southern New England. And then let's head on to Tuesday here. We can continue it out a little bit more. And we start to work, look at this, the Southern Catskills, Poconos, getting upwards of an inch to inch and three quarters here. All, all, in some of these areas, these heavier gully washers could be up towards three, four inches in some of these, you know, yellowish areas here. So not everybody's going to see this and don't focus on any one point here. But the, the, this has been the trends here on the mesoscale models really holding tough with some dry air up here in New England. That will start to break down later Tuesday and early Wednesday, however. And the Euro here, let's take a look at a generalized, you know, pattern here heading on into late Monday, Tuesday. There it is, Tuesday into New England. So yeah, the, the Euro is kind of hinting, you know, at some uh, interesting rainfall totals here um, across a little bit more widespread uh, so to speak, around that inch mark. So definitely want to keep an eye on this. The trends are uh, supporting some heavier showers and thunderstorms here across Pennsylvania and New York State uh, later Monday into Tuesday here. So And then we start to push that up towards New England. Now, if we take a look at the national view here for the Euro, you can see there it is. So the upper level lows back across Chicagoland area. And look at this. Here's the tropical moisture heading across Florida. And then it heads up into the northeast. So you got this secondary area on the northwest side of this upper level low. But look how it's just feeding right up here into parts of the northeast. So definitely want to keep an eye on this widespread one inch totals in the heaviest gully washers here. All right, John sending in a photo here. The waves from Danielle up in Blackpool, UK. Take a look at this. Nice capture here, John. Those waves really kicking up across the Blackpool, UK area from what's left of Danielle. Nice capture. All right, so let's start off with the temperature trends here. That We have a cool pool of air here across the Great Lakes into the Midwest. Only in the 60s for uh, Monday here, but we're holding on to upper 70s, near 80 here into the northeast for your Monday. Watch this. This cooler air pivots towards the northeast. Some areas will be only in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees here across parts of the northeast, but we moderate that into your Wednesday, September 14th here. Still some cooler shots north of these red lines into the 60s, uh, but we have heat building here across the central part of the United States. And watch this as we head towards Thursday. Another reinforcing shot here across the lakes into the northeast. North of this line, we might only see highs in the 60s, mid-60s, Rochester, Albany, Burlington, Vermont, Portland, Maine. Yeah, looking pretty cool there. And then into your Friday as well, TGIF. We moderate it just slightly as we get some of these warmer temperatures pushing in. Extended outlook from hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley, Monday through Friday. Monday is our best shot of showers and thunderstorms, particularly after 2 p.m. up to 8 p.m. Some of these gully washers could get upwards of a half to three quarters of an inch. Most areas will see a tenth to a quarter inch of rain. Heading up towards 77 Tuesday, we'll have some residual showers and thunderstorms, particularly earlier in the day, but we might clear out towards evening. Heading up towards the low 70s into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Look at that sleeping weather. Down into the 40s. 41 for a low on Friday. Look at that. Thursday's high only in the upper 60s. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. There's links in the description down below for all the good stuff. I am working on my winter weather 2022-2023 outlook. Get my Facebook page at Medium Mark. That's my main page. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern. As always, smash the like button, question, or comment down below. Thanks for joining me.